Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Ronnie Miner. I'm a director at TBM, a local value add reseller focused on various solutions, including cybersecurity. So my presentation today will focus on navigating the evolving cyber threat landscape. To start off, we'll, I'll take you back a little bit because history is always a good teacher. The history of what we're calling cyber threats started off way back. Um, I'll take you back to when the computer virus was born in 1983. Uh, thereafter, in 1988, uh, a gentleman called Robert T. Morris released the Morris Worm. So here we're talking about threats targeting our IT environment that common words like viruses and worms started in the 80s. That was what we, we, we called the contagion era. Then we moved to the lone wolf era. This is now in the 90s when technology moved to personal devices. In the early 90s is when the personal computer became very prevalent. Uh, individuals were now connected to the internet. Email became something that each and everybody could have. Prior to that, it was an organizational contact, like the head office line. But now everybody had an email box. In the year 2000, you find various uh, hackers or attacks like the Mafia Boy virus, which it is estimated cost a damage of $7.5 million then. Also in the year 2000, a virus called I Love You virus, which looked at email boxes, right? And it targeted Windows. Of course, the main email box then was uh, Windows email. And it targeted Windows PCs crashing the email system. Then we come towards the uh, mid-2003, 2006, DDoS attacks. Uh, that was now the crowdsourcing era, where it was no longer about individuals and mass targeting devices. It was groups of individuals. So we find something common between us as a group of people. We form some form of organization. And we agree our motive, as negative as it may be, is to create certain technologies that will attack institutions. Come to the 2010 to 2010 to 2018 period, this whole grouping of uh, malicious intent now moves to no longer from a group level to a national level. And you've heard of the word cyber war. I think previous presentations here mentioned cyber war. And here you'll find, like in 2017, the Russian intelligence uh, targeted cyber espionage. They launched a cyber espionage campaign against a particular government. 2018 as well, Chinese-linked hackers targeted the US and Southeast Asian farms. So. There, that's where we are today. We are at a national crisis where governments or strategic national companies are being targeted by foreign entities. What does the future look like? Now we are automating it, and I think it has been mentioned, artificial intelligence. AI is going to do what 10, 20 individuals were doing in five days and you'll probably do it in a couple of minutes in building certain threats. Um, one of the other trends that is affecting us now is the whole issue of social media platforms. In this scenario here, I've given an, an, an example of identity theft. So you have an Instagram account someone manages to gain access to your individual account, they post messages, and your followers, family, friends, colleagues, get affected. 
So that's just an example of identity theft. Um, something to note. On average, how many passwords do you think you have for all your applications, both official and informal? The average here is being said as 90. I don't think I have 90, but I would, I would say I know I have at least more than 20 for the different platforms that I access. Right? Now, with those number of uh, passwords, unique passwords, well, I hope they're unique, there is still a threat. Websites, this is a daily occurrence. The statistic being given here is that, um, on average, 30,000 attacks occur targeting websites. So let's talk about this journey of um, threats. Phishing, spams, getting access to two critical in, uh, components of your or your individual's uh, in information. There's your identity, and there's data. So by clicking on the wrong email link or attachment, you can give access to ransomware where an individual or an organization takes over a component of your infrastructure or your environment, encrypts it, and demands compensation. That is ransomware. Um, both data theft and identity theft. Last year, we had an incident within our own environment, locally. Anonymous Sudan became a very popular name. And Anonymous Sudan focused on a national platform. So in my previous slide, I spoke about social media. That's a platform, cloud-based platform, Instagram, Facebook. But if you come to a national level, eCitizen, was a national transactional platform to serve Kenyan citizens. So what do they do? They create various methods of disrupting the efficient operation of this platform. So let's talk about the evolving environment that we're in. Two main points, cloud and AI. So we have organizations somewhere along the journey of implementing cloud. You have, of course, off-prem cloud. You have maybe part of your information on-prem. You have a mixture, hybrid. Um, the current attacks are focused on targeting Cloud, because cloud is a strategy we are all looking at and are at various points of that journey. The statistic there says 82% of breaches in 2022 involved data in the cloud. AI attacks, I mentioned the groupings of people that were previously seated looking at individuals or organizations are now implementing tools. And what an AI tool can do in five minutes is potentially save the same time it would have taken these humans two days. This is a faster rate of developing threats. On the second half of my slide, the same AI that can be used as a threat, you will find that they are also individuals who are trying to use AI as an early form of defense. So there are some organizations that have already decided as early adapters of AI. And yes, it will save you time. That's the main benefit of AI and costs. Cloud platforms. So security has always been considered as a multitude of levels or functions within your IT architecture. You had endpoints, you had networks, you had identities for users, you have applications. Most importantly, you had data. In the modern era of protection, you now have to think of the combination of all of those components as a platform. 
a platform that consists of a combination of all those components, whether it's data, identity, networks, applications. So does your strategy look at individual components or does it try and address the platform perspective? So here I'll talk about a little bit about, um, it has been discussed where you start this journey of trying to deal with the uh, current trends. And one of the words that has been used is, do you have a cybersecurity strategy? Do you have a cybersecurity plan? Um, another uh, term that was used earlier by a previous presenter is the zero trust strategy. So you have an environment, I've just use the word platform to take the holistic view of your environment. Does your zero trust strategy address your platform end to end? And the point being made here is some people are partially on the journey of fully deploying a zero trust strategy and others are somewhere along the way. So does your cybersecurity plan have a current Analysis, this is where we are, this is what we've done. And do you give yourself a target? Where do we want to be in this strategy within 12 months or 24 months? Um, another consideration when looking, looking at your cybersecurity strategy is managing third party compliance. Within a Kenyan context, ODPC became a requirement, a national requirement for compliance. Where are you in your journey of conforming to Kenyan law in terms of governing data under ODPC? That's an example of third party compliance. Again, an as is or a current situation where you are and a target in terms of timelines of where you'd like to be should be a component or form a part of your cyber security strategy or roadmap. Um, some of the other key points to note, your cyber security strategy should of course align with your business initiatives. I'll give an example. You're a Kenyan based entity. You're only looking at local compliance. But what if your business says they want to be a Pan-African entity? You want to grow your business across East and West Africa. Are you aware of what it will take to be compliant when you come out of the Kenyan context? So there is evolving regular, regulatory and security frameworks. I've mentioned regulation. And of course, the skills aspect. Your cybersecurity strategy will highlight some of the areas where you have gaps. Are there skills required for you to fill those gaps within your environment? Or do you need to go outside your environment and look for specialists, look for experts? That is another consideration when talking about your cybersecurity strategy. So here we'll talk about some of the pillars that you should consider as well within that cybersecurity strategy, cloud being one of the critical components, and of course, data. I'll just click on all three. So you have component A, which is visibility. As of today, if there was an attack, an incident, do you have visibility of the threats that are occurring within your environment. Talks about uh, SOC. Uh, I believe there was mention of SOC. It could be your own in-house SOC. It could be you have gone to a SOC provider. The main information you'd like from them is visibility on what is happening within your environment. Middle component, management. So yes, I have visibility of my environment, my threats. How am I managing? when I get those dashboards, right? 
Of course, on the dashboards, hopefully, we'll be giving you full awareness of what is within or on-prem, what is off-prem, and of course, what is happening between the two from a hybrid perspective. Then you have the final component of authentication. Here we're talking about staff, human resource, people. There is the element of devices, there is the element of applications, and combining the two of cloud and on-prem, how do you authenticate who is gaining access to this environment? And finally, or combining all three together, visibility, management, and authentication is using the latest in technology, AI, right? AI can help in giving you intelligence in either one of those three components. So I'll touch a little bit of AI. I know the next speaker will also be covering this. Artificial intelligence. Data sets, it starts with data sets. You have data, especially those organizations that have been operational for decades, and then you create models. Data sets, models. And the two combined start giving you insights, intelligence that you previously did not have. Very important, have you secured the underlying data sets? Before you talk about creating that layer of AI, all this data that you have, your organization has been creating or has created over time, 10 years, 20 years, are those data sets secure? Next, you then want to build these models, the models that you'll be using to interrogate the data sets. Are the models secure? And is, do you have tools scanning to ensure that they are protected. And finally, if and when somebody decides to try and penetrate your environment, trying to access the data sets and the models you've created, can you identify if there's any leakage or attacks? Right? So that is security for AI. And what will you gain out of that? If you were to now implement AI, within your environment. I mentioned about time. We know what AI can do compared to humans, right? So they are faster than humans in terms of generating security content. Secondly, they are continuously improving, continuously learning. So with the right implementation, it's not static. Whatever you build today, it will be looking at the incidences and threats that are occurring and regenerating itself. And that, uh, those are some of the benefits that you'll get, reducing the human bottleneck. From an industry perspective, um, here, the slide is my second last slide. What we're trying to show is compliance to various standards. There are foundational security compo um, compliance that you can do within your organization, whether it's from an encryption perspective, from an identity perspective, you will implement some of those standards. Then you'll move to within the organization itself, processes and procedures. What is best practice? What are you going to implement as best practice within your environment, policies that are governing your internal operations. When you now move out of your environment and you're now talking about outside the domain of your technology, you are now at the mercy of global compliance standards, national compliance standards. There is uh, industry standards for various industries. I've just mentioned, for example, ODPC from a Kenyan data protection uh, perspective. 
So there's threat intelligence, collaborative and detection-based standards, and eventually, I think it was mentioned, sharing of some of these um, risks and threats, which is done as well and governed by various um, standards and bodies. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah.